and my name is Nova Bakari. I am the CEO and co-founder of a company called Sift. Sift is an online marketplace facilitating like temporary work. Uh, so we have a bunch of uh, workers on our platform we call Sifters. Um, and once we you know, interview them one-to-one, -one, verify them, they get access to all these jobs which uh, come from our clients. Um, and essentially they're allowed to engage with each other directly. You know, typically in temporary staffing, you'd have an agency who sits themselves in the middle and as a worker, you don't see all the work and as a client, you don't see all the workers. We essentially build a platform to break that opaqueness, give complete transparency. And through that transparency, the clients and the workers can choose to meet with each other. It's a bit like Tinder for jobs, um, uh, but in temporary staffing. And uh, because of that extra engagement, it leads to better outcomes for our clients and our workers. You know, a simple example is, for a worker who chooses to work somewhere versus a worker who's put somewhere, um, they're three times more likely to turn up versus when they don't. No, I guess uh, some that people, not many people know, uh, it's not really relevant to be a CRO, but uh, throughout university, I paid my way by playing high stakes poker um, online and uh, in tournaments. I became a CRO because I gave myself the title by the virtue of founding my own business alongside my co-founder <laughs> and Jack. Um, but when we set up the business, it became very clear that between the two, between our two sort of traits and skill sets, uh, he lent himself very much to the commercials and the client relationship aspects of the business, and I was very much in the everything else, <laughs> which, which sort of fell on the umbrella of CRO quite well. A typical day for me looks like it's full of meetings and uh, with a 15 to 30 minute lunch if I'm lucky. <laughs> Generally speaking, as CRO, I'm in the weeds of the entire business uh, from a strategic level. Um, so from all departments, from product to marketing to operations to HR, uh, there's usually strategic initiatives that are occurring and I liaise with uh, the various functional leads quite regularly on how those initiatives are going um, and you know, lending my expertise or lending a hand in terms of trying to get the ball rolling from, in one other department to support them. Um, so it's, it's literally back-to-back -back meetings and occasionally I block out my diary to take some time just to take a step back and look at the data, catch up on emails and things like that. You have to be quite strategic um, as a COO. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of what you do um, is problem solving. Um, you need to be quite a chameleon essentially, in the sense that, you know, you've got, to, you've got to put on, you know, in that strategic thinking, in that problem solving, you have to put on various hats. Uh, you've got to look at things from different perspectives, you know, from a financial perspective, from a product perspective, from a marketing perspective, an operational perspective. Uh, whilst they're all pulling towards the same goal, they're all addressing things in a very different way. And being able to be able to contribute to that, um, to that functional leader in a meaningful way, you've got to be able to put yourself in their shoes and think of things from their perspective. Um, so, Having that sort of broad church of, uh, of expertise is quite handy. Um, good communication and leadership skills are super important. I know those are very basic and generic, but fundamentally, you know, if you want to drive strategic change, you've got to be able to communicate and articulate why that needs to happen and lead people through that change process. So those two sort of like facets are, are very important. So the biggest problem we have, that I have as a CEO, is all around allocation of resources, uh, fundamentally. Like we all have, uh, we have lots of problems we have to solve and it's consistently trying to work out for where we want to be in a year or a quarter, whatever it may be, what is the problem we need to solve now and prioritize that whilst knowing there's another problem and doing nothing about it essentially. Um, uh, so like the biggest problem is not any individual problem we have, the biggest problem is which ones do we solve? <laughs> and that is where a CEO, you know, plays a really big important role in terms of being the independent party, right? Um, you know, especially when it comes to things like engineering resource, you know, marketing needs this uh, integration and uh, operations need this integration for optimization. And you've got to, you've got to find, you've got to step back and be like, okay, I recognize you both want this resource, but ultimately what's most important for the overall archery business is X. And it will mean some people are disappointed whilst others are happy, um, but being able to, you know, bring um, bring on those people who you've said no to. You've got to be able to really uh, like explain the entirety of the business for why something else is more important than their thing, um, which is a tough, tough ask um, a lot of the time. And it means some departments have their stuff parked for months 
<laughs> versus people who seem to get X priority, but it's just a matter of where we are in the business. The advice uh, I'd have for expiring CROs is, um, and, it almost, and it also plays into founders as well, to be honest, it's um, seek out your problems um, and don't be afraid to talk about them, uh, confront them, um, and don't be afraid of the fact that they exist. You know, as a CEO, your, your, your goal is to seek out the problems before they become, you know, bottlenecks and like serious challenges for the business to scale. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with having a problem in the business. It's very normal. Um, other than that, um, patience. Patience is super, super key. You know, at a leadership level, um, you can't have impatient leaders. I don't think it inspires people to do things. It may inspire fear to an extent. Um, but you, you, know, you don't want to drive change through fear, you want to drive change through um, aspiration, essentially. So uh, patience is super, super important. I mean, it plays into everything I've said, but you know, being fair and transparent above all else is really good. If you, if you, can, if you can be really transparent uh, in all your decision making, um, people will be able to see you know, the reasons behind what you've made. And, and if they can do that, they can buy into it and they can trust you as a leader. And, um, and come to you essentially with their challenges. So like being really transparent and really upfront and honest is is probably one very key thing I left out I should put, I should have mentioned. Um, if anything, if I for whenever I do my one-on-one -on -one yearly reviews, um, the feedback I always get is I really appreciate the honesty and transparency. Um, and I guess if you want to also build out your senior management team, um, giving them the opportunity to take ownership themselves. Um, transitioning from like a management team of myself and my co-founder to like a management team of 11 or 12 and having to sort of relinquish a lot of responsibility to people as we've scaled um, is, is, is a difficult piece because you can sort of be like, oh, you're doing it wrong, but, <laughs> but you've got to let them do it because you've hired them because you believe they're really good at what they do. So you've got to let them do it and, and trust in the process. Um, so yeah, you know, you know, being fair and transparent, um, building trust by you know sharing trust essentially as well.